So what are some of the stereotypes you've heard people say about Muslims? Muslims are terrorists. Muslim women are oppressed. You know, go back home. Uh, you're a foreigner. Not all Muslims are terrorists, but all terrorists are Muslim. Muslims are un-American. They're all Arab. The Quran teaches hate. Such stereotypes are widespread, but are they true? In recent years, there have been dozens of polls conducted worldwide and right here in the United States. American Muslims are an integral part of our society. You see Muslims in media, in comedy, in acting, in medicine, law, engineering, business. They're engaged in politics. They're engaged in they're starting their own organizations that are benefiting the community. So Muslim Americans are really tapped into almost every sector imaginable. Their job creators, 24%, have started their own companies. American Muslims are largely middle class and mainstream. American Muslims are like other Americans, with comparable percentages watching entertainment television, following professional or college sports, and recycling household materials. The U.S. government estimates the American Muslim population at around 7 million. There are Muslims who have immigrated from literally every other part of the earth. It would be impossible to talk about Muslims in America without talking about African Americans. So you have an extremely diverse pool of ethnic and national diversity. They are as likely as the average American to attend a religious service, as likely to say that religion is important to them they're actually slightly more likely to believe that people of other faiths have a chance at salvation. According to Gallup research, American Muslims are the most likely faith community to condemn attacks on civilians. They're also the least likely faith community to sympathize or say that it's ever justified to attack deliberately killing civilians. Now that's the reality of American Muslims. Unfortunately, the perception among many in the public is totally different. Only 27% of Americans polled have a favorable view of Islam. Some might say that the reason for this is obvious. But is it? Most Muslims reject violence. But that's not what the West media focuses on. So you can have hundreds of Muslim leaders denouncing violence and that would never make it to the newspapers or on TV or anywhere. Certainly it's a fact that there are some Muslims out there who want to do harm to others. But I've seen nothing to suggest that Muslims as, 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 as a community um, or, as, or Islam as a religion is more likely to lead to people to violence. Terrorism in America is, is sort of almost a melting pot. There are a lot of different types of, of motivations that drive terrorist attacks uh, in the United States. Very few of the, the attacks that have actually been carried out have been motivated by uh, Islamism. I think a lot of people have this have a misunderstanding that uh, Muslims are, are carrying out attacks and they're always targeted at, uh, at Christians or at non-Muslims, but it is much more often the case that their actual victims are Muslims. According to the National Counterterrorism Center, Muslims worldwide are the main targets of extremist violence and are between 82 to 97 percent of those killed or injured in terrorist attacks. Then why are Muslims mainly presented as the perpetrators of terrorism rather than as the primary victims? Why don't more Americans view average, faithful Muslims as the true representatives of Islam rather than the extremists? If you feel that other group is threatening, you impute all kinds of vice and evil. You reduce them to stereotypes, and often you use the most extreme member of the other group as a representative of that stereotype. What fear does to people, according to neuroscience, is it, it increases their acceptance of authoritarianism, conformity, and prejudice. The result is the marginalization of Muslims in America's civic, social, and political life. Society is telling them that they're not a part of the American society. They're not a part of the fabric of this country. In a 2010 Gallup poll, 
almost half of all American Muslims reported experiencing racial or religious discrimination in the past year. So let's ask again, are these negative perceptions fair? The extremist quote from the Quran, isn't terrorism in the Quran? The Quran does speak about terrorism, but it uses a very specific word. In Arabic, it's called irjef. And this word irjef means crooked action to instill fear and violence in people, but that fear and that violence is based on hypocrisy. So according to the Quranic uh, paradigm, terrorism or extremist behavior is really an acting out of hypocrisy. Muslim scholars have written a letter to the leader of ISIS. We are appealing to him by using Islamic knowledge and Islamic teaching to say, this is not what Islam is all about. What he is teaching does not represent the teaching of the Holy Quran. The Holy Quran says that whoever take a life of innocent person, as if have taken the life of all humanity, and whoever save one life, as if have saved the life of all humanity. The Quran clearly says there is no compulsion in religion. You can't force anyone to convert to your beliefs, whether they're political beliefs, economic beliefs, religious beliefs. The Quran obviously uh, is very clear about the sanctity of life and respecting everyone's freedom to practice. Whoever wills, let them believe. Whoever wills, don't let them believe. Clear cut. One of the first things that any student of the Islamic tradition learns growing up is the prophetic tradition that says, show mercy to those on earth and the one in the heavens, or God, will show mercy to you. And that's really the cornerstone of what Islam teaches. Out of my childhood, having grown up as the only Muslim American family in a strong conservative Christian community, I found that for us as children and young people, it didn't matter the color of our skin, or the faith that we followed, that we came together based on a shared love of God, our shared values. One third of American Muslims report working to solve a problem or improve a condition in their community. 75% have donated to or assisted local charities. Muslim doctors decided to establish a compassionate network of medical professionals who provide medical services and healthcare free of charge to everybody to a person of Islamic background, a Jewish, a Christian, or a person who have no faith. There are more than 20,000 Muslim physicians in the United States, and they operate over 100 free medical clinics around the country. So we're actually seeing Muslims respond to Muslim extremists with the teachings of their own faith, basically debunking their actions, their extremism, with the core teachings of what Islam really is. What happened in North Carolina when these three Muslim students were killed was really traumatic for the Muslim community. And instead of just responding with uh, an, a statement of condemnation, um, they responded with love. And a campaign came out of that to feed our local hungry. And within one month, we have nearly 300 mosques, Muslim student groups hosting canned food drives around America to feed their hungry neighbors. When there have been national disasters, American Muslims have helped provide relief. Answering the call of their faith, they serve and sacrifice for their fellow Americans in many ways. Muslims are involved in every aspect of the United States of America. They're not the problem, they're the solution. Fear has become toxic. We have to unite. Islam really is a cohesive, complete paradigm of way of life. Uh, and when you take it all, then it makes sense. You can coexist with others. Uh, you can build wonderful things. You can collaborate. You can be part of civilization. One of the most beautiful stories that I love of the Prophet Muhammad is his first statement upon entering Medina after suffering years of persecution in Mecca. His first words to the people of Medina were to spread peace, to feed the hungry, maintain ties with your family, and to pray at night when others are sleeping. And if you look at that statement, it's pretty amazing because the first three things are all about your relationship with other people. It didn't say to, to feed the hungry Muslims. It didn't say to spread peace to Muslims only. But it's really about connecting to humanity uh, before even 
your personal connection with God, it was your personal connection with other human beings. Every day, the beliefs of American Muslims are called into question. Don't be fooled by the actions of extremists. Speak up against unfair stereotypes. Share the facts about American Muslims. They represent the real truth about Islam. For more videos and information about American Muslim facts, visit AmericanMuslimFacts.com. Hashtag Muslims in America 2022.